Brand new Boston Bruins head coach Jim Montgomery is starting to form an idea of what opening night lines will look like. And speaking of lines, we're going to take a look at the early 2020-23 Stanley Cup odds and see where the Bruins rank there. All that and more on today's episode of Locked On Boston Bruins. Your Locked On Bruins, your daily podcast on the Boston Bruins. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What is up, Bruins fans, and welcome back to the Locked On Boston Bruins podcast. I'm your host, Ian McLaren, and this is a daily show where we discuss all things spoke to be, as well as take a look around the NHL. I want to thank you so much for making Locked On Bruins your first listen every day, free and available wherever you get your podcasts. So please open up your podcast app, go to YouTube, search up Locked On Boston Bruins, and hit that subscribe button. The latest episode is a chat with Boston Bruins second round draft pick prospect Matt Poitra of the OHL's Guelph Storm. Thanks to all who checked that out so far, and please do so if you haven't already. It's a very uh, fun chat that I had uh, with Matt, and I hope to connect with him again soon. As I mentioned on today's podcast, we're going to talk about Jim Montgomery's for vision for opening night lines with some key injuries in the mix, and look at the opening Stanley Cup odds for this upcoming season. Now, Jim Montgomery joined uh, Gresh and Keefe on Tuesday at the 20th annual WEEI Nesson Jimmy Fund Radio Telethon, and the new bench boss revealed his early plans for how to configure the lineup, in particular, the top six forward group. Montgomery said he intends to put David Krejci and David Pasternak on the second line. The pair recently played together for the Czech national team at the World Championship, winning a bronze medal. Based on that recent success, he's not going to switch anything up. You know, over the course of 82 games, things could get stale and people might rotate. But... He's going to start the year with David Krejci. Speaking of David Pasternak, Pasternak might get a chance to play with Bergie. He might get a chance to play with Krejci at times. But he's going to start the year with David Krejci, and they'll go from there. On the left side will be Taylor Hall. Uh, he liked Montgomery did the way that Hall and Krejci played together late in the 2020-2021 season. Uh, Hall also, of course, found success with Pasternak through the second half of last season with Eric Halla down the middle. Montgomery said, Taylor Hall had such a great year when Krejci was his center. Krejci is a really dynamic centerman through the neutral zone, which allows Taylor Hall to get his feet going. It's going to allow him to put pucks to spaces and allow him to score off the rush. That's the way he sees it initially anyways. Taylor Hall played a more of a playmaking role last season with Krejci down the middle now. No disrespect to Hala, but Krejci is a legit top six center. And he'll be able to dish to both the left and the right, uh, freeing up Hall from having to be a driver on that line per se and allowing him to um, yeah maybe up his goal total for this season as well now of course Brad Marchand is out with a hip injury likely will sideline him for the first couple months of the season probably around December early December he'll be able to come back and Montgomery believes it makes sense to put Pavel Zaka on the left side of the top line, allowing him to grow alongside 
a elite two-way center like Patrice Bergeron. The plan is to also keep Jake DeBrusque with Bergeron after DeBrusque had a strong finish to last season on the top line. Montgomery said bringing in a really good player like Pavel Zaka, introducing him to the Bruins way, an opportunity to start camp with Patrice Bergeron, learning how to compete, learning how to play the right way. That's what he envisions for the newcomer. Uh, he does a lot of that already. That's why the Bruins went and got him. He's a talented hockey player that's produced at the NHL level. And now he'll get an opportunity to play with one of the best players in the NHL. So based on Montgomery's comments, we can expect Zaka bergeron Debrusk, Hall, Krejci, Pasternak to be in the season. You should then extrapolate that to when Marshawn comes back and assume that Zaka will be on the third line with Charlie Coyle and Craig Smith. And uh, there'll be a trickle-down effect from there with guys battling it out to play in the bottom six. There's one X factor here, and that's Fabian Lysel. The injury to Marchand, coupled with Jake DeBrusque being a natural left winger and a left-hand shot, could open things up for Lysel to get a look in the top six early in the season. Montgomery said if he has a great camp, he's going to get that opportunity. That's the one silver lining about the injury to Marchand is it opens up a door. Lysel has to knock through that door. When that opportunity comes, you earn your way into the NHL. His decision will come ultimately down to which players he sees having the best chemistry on the ice, but having a deep roster allows him to be flexible with top six forwards. When you have two really good centers like Krejci and Bergeron, it gives you a lot of weapons, a lot of options to get the best matchups that you want against other teams. I've said for a little while now that I expect Lysel to make the team out of camp. You know, they have a window of time where they can assess his game in real time NHL action before they have to decide whether or not to send him back to the WHL's Vancouver Giants, have his ELC slide one season, or send him to Providence where he can begin his pro career in the AHL. If he were to crack the lineup, you want him playing in the top six. You don't want him in the NHL getting limited time when he could be thriving and building confidence, developing his game at the AHL or OHL levels. So if he were to make the team out of camp, you put him on the top line, you have to decide whether DeBrusque goes over to the other side, whether you keep a responsible defensive forward like Zaka on the left side to help shield him, and then you go DeBrusque, Coyle Smith, which was the plan last season, didn't quite catch on. Uh, but there are options there for Jim Montgomery. What we know for sure is that Hall, Krejci, Pasta will be a line. And Bergeron will be coming back and have to carry a bit more of the load on the top line with Marchand out and uh, some new faces or younger faces on his wings. Before we get to the opening Stanley Cup odds via Bet Online, I want to talk a bit about them here for a moment. Bet Online is the fastest and easiest way to check in on all your betting needs. Find all your favorite sports and events at the number one online source for odds, lines, and games. You can find news and reviews of every league, including Major League Baseball, NFL, NBA, NHL combat sports, uh, eSports, even golf. BetOnline continues to be the top online resource for all your sports wagering information from live in-game betting, scores, and podcasts. They have you covered. Head to BetOnline today or use your mobile device to learn more about the action happening today at BetOnline, where 
the game starts. If you were to go and visit Bet Online at the moment, they have their Stanley Cup conference and division futures available. Let's take a quick look at the Atlantic Division first and then jump to Conference and Stanley Cup. As of right now, Bet Online has the Florida Panthers, the favorites to repeat as Atlantic Division champions, followed by the Toronto Maple Leafs, then the Tampa Bay Lightning, and the Boston Bruins. So, not really much different from last season in terms of how the top four would shake out. I'd say the Panthers got a bit weaker with Mackenzie Wieger, Jonathan Huberto going to Calgary, Matthew Kachuk coming in. The defense certainly took a hit there. Anthony Duclair injured to start the season. The Maple Leafs, some changes in their goaltending. Lightning got a bit weaker, losing some key players like Andre Palat. Um, the Bruins, of course, they're well behind these top three when it comes to these odds at plus 900. From there, it's a bit of a crapshoot. They have the uh, Sabres, Red Wings, Senators all at plus 2,500. Montreal Canadiens at plus 6,600. So they are picking the Canadiens once again to, or not picking, but... Uh, they have the worst odds of winning the winning the division. Now, when it comes to conference futures, let's see where the Bruins rank there. Go to other sports, hockey, NHL futures. Conference futures. They have the Bruins behind the Panthers, Hurricanes, Maple Leafs, Lightning, Rangers, but ahead of the Penguins, Islanders, Capitals, Devils, Senators, Red Wings, Blue Jackets, Flyers, and Canadians. Not putting much faith in the Columbus Blue Jackets to improve despite adding. Uh, the Flyers, Canadians, still projected to be well down the standings. The Canadians have made some moves, but looks like they'll be without Carey Price for a whole season and still a very, very young team. Sabres, Red Wings improved, as have the Senators. Not sure if they're quite ready to jump up to playoff contention. Right now, the top eight teams, Panthers, Hurricanes, Maple Leafs, Lightning, Rangers, Bruins, Penguins, and they have the Islanders and Capitals battling it out for the final playoff spot there. When it comes to the Stanley Cup, where do the Bruins come in? The favorites to win the 2023 Stanley Cup, Colorado Avalanche favored to repeat despite losing, uh, you know, goaltender. Um... Uh, who won? Who was it that won? The drawing a blank here. Their goaltending took a hit for sure, as Darcy Kemper uh, has moved on, and uh, Pavel Francouz, and uh, who I don't even know who their backup is. Darcy Kemper, of course, going to the Washington Capitals. Colorado Avalanche, Pavel Francouz. And uh, who is their backup at the moment? Let me just take a look here. Anyways, they're still favored to repeat as Stanley Cup champions with a very young, talented team. They lost Nazem Kadri, of course. They um, re-upped, or they lost Andre Burakovsky. So it's going to be tough, despite some losses. Alexander Georgiev, of course, is their new backup. But they're favored to repeat. The Florida Panthers, second best odds, followed by Tampa Bay, Toronto, the Hurricanes, Oilers, both at plus 1,200, the Flames, plus 1,800, New York Rangers at plus 1,800, the 
Los Angeles Kings, Minnesota Wild at plus 2,000. Vegas Golden Knights plus 2,200 despite losing Robin Leonard. Still have, and Max Pacioretty, they traded him away. Um, then the Pittsburgh Penguins, followed by the Boston Bruins. They're tied with the St. Louis Blues at plus 2,800. So middle of the pack odds there for the Boston Bruins. And let's be honest, that kind of tracks with where they're expected to be. I don't know if anybody, despite the uh, return of Patrice Bergeron, despite David Krejci rejoining the team, I don't think anybody really expects that the Bruins will jump up into the top three in the Atlantic division. Yeah, I just don't know who they would overtake. Maybe Florida will take a bigger step back than expected. Maybe the Lightning finally will take a, a step back. Maybe the Maple Leafs will falter under their new goaltending tandem of Matt Murray and Ilya Samsonov. But all three of those teams are still pretty high-end. And the Bruins, of course, will be starting the season with some injury issues. I know the Locked On Fantasy Hockey Podcast guys picking the Bruins to miss the playoffs. I don't know if they're going to miss altogether, but it will be more challenging. There's teams, maybe if they're not ready to jump up, they've certainly improved. Your Columbuses. New Jersey might take another step forward. Your Senators, Red Wings, even the Sabres. Canadians, I think, will still be not great, but they're building and they're trying to get better. So we'll see. We'll see how things work out. But the Bruins, in all honesty, not cup favorites by any stretch of the imagination. Some people will jump on the trend of not picking them to make the playoffs. I still think they're a playoff team in the Eastern Conference as currently built. They have a pretty solid goaltending tandem. The defensive pieces are there once healthy. Uh, again, it'll come down to how much they can stay afloat to begin uh, the season. And of course, we'll talk about all this and more in the days and weeks to come here on the Locked On Boston Bruins podcast as the... Uh, off season wraps up and we look ahead to the start of training camp as well as the prospects tournament that will take place uh, on the 17th in Buffalo that Matt Potter was talking about the other day here on the Locked On Boston Bruins podcast. On Friday, going to look at the NHL network rankings by position that have come out recently. Some very questionable choices. Going to break that down on Friday's episode of the Locked On Boston Bruins podcast. Let's finish with some news and notes from around the NHL and Deputy Commissioner Bill Daly saying that it appears as though they're moving forward with a World Cup of Hockey in 2024. They're going to target a 17-day window in February to hold the tournament. This was last played in Toronto in 2016. Uh, there were also tournaments in 96, 2004. This one would be a bit different. Those events were played prior to the start of an NHL season. This one would have kind of a Olympic style break in the middle of a season in order to uh, make it happen. Uh, Bill Daly said Wednesday during or today, during the NHL's European player media tour that they're moving full steam ahead, and that means they're continuing to have regular meetings. Uh, they want to play one pool in Europe and a preliminary round pool in North America and move the semifinals and the final to a different city in North America. Um, the short list would universally encompass more traditional hockey markets. Boston could certainly be one of those. Uh, so that would be uh, would be pretty fun. Now, they're over in Europe right now because the Predators 
and Sharks will play a preseason game in Switzerland on October 3rd. Um, and they will open the regular season in Prague on October 7th and 8th. Avalanche and Blue Jackets will play in Finland on November 4th and 5th. I believe our own Hampus Lindholm is in Paris today. And uh, this global series will continue strong. The Bruins, of course, went to China in 2018. The cover of NHL 23 has also been revealed. Last week, you'll <clears throat> recall that I advocated for our boy David Pasternak to be on the cover. Uh, but EA Sports making history by having the first women's hockey player to appear on the cover. And that will be Team Canada star Sarah Nurse. She will join Anaheim Ducks center Trevor Zagras on the cover. Nurse led all players with an Olympic record 18 points as Canada won a gold medal over the United States at the 2022 Beijing Winter Games. Zagras, of course, made some spectacular plays last season and uh, one of the more marketable young American players in the NHL. He said, as someone who has played EA Sports NHL since I was a kid, it's a dream come true to be on the cover this year with Sarah. Can't wait to play this year's version with my friends and teammates. Equally excited to see fans unleash the Michigan Flip Pass, which the team at EA Sports has managed to get in the game. As I talked about, Recent cover athletes included Austin Matthews, who had it twice, Alex Ovechkin, P.K. Subban, Connor McDavid. Official trailer for the game will be revealed on Thursday. And uh, again, kind of disappointed that Pasternak didn't make it. Ovechkin, of course, was a European player put on it. Uh, are they going to put a Czech player on there? They should, in my opinion, but they didn't. And uh, hopefully... Maybe next year, if he wins the Rocket Rocher Trophy. And hopefully, he's still in black and gold. Um, and that will be, of course, a developing conversation here on Locked On Boston Bruins. The status of <clears throat> David Posternock and his contract. Anyways, thank you again for making Locked On Boston Bruins your first listen every day. We'll go over those NHL Network rankings on Friday. Maybe answer any of your questions that you send in. Don't forget to check out the Locked On NHL podcast where Locked On experts will give you a daily 30-minute dose of all things NHL all year long. Stay up to date on everything in the hockey world with Locked On NHL, your daily 30-minute NHL podcast here on the Locked On Podcast Network, your favorite team every single day. Take care of yourselves, friends. Take care of each other. We'll talk to you again here on Friday on Locked On Boston Bruins.